Part 2, Chapter 12 On the way back to the trolley stop, Frankie skipped ahead of Mike and Mr. Howard and stopped in front of a shop window. He turned wide-eyed, waving to them to hurry. Mike jogged to him. What is it, kid? It's them, he said, pointing to a large poster displayed in the window of Wilkinson's Music Emporium. It's the harmonica wizards. Frankie pressed his nose on the glass. Mike looked up at the poster of over sixty boys in military-style uniforms, capes, and plumed hats. A tiny man wearing a red apron stepped from the shop. His gray mustache had been waxed into an old-fashioned handlebar, curling up on both ends. Good day, gentlemen, he nodded toward the poster. Aren't they something? The famous Philadelphia Harmonica Band. Are you boys going to enter the contest? Still plenty of time. Sir, what's all this? asked Mr. Howard. Citywide competition in August. Thousands of children taking lessons all over Philadelphia. Lots of prizes, including musical instruments. It's an audition of, store, of sorts. The top five winners are invited to join the band and travel all over. They, ha they have their own women's auxiliary, raising money for uniforms, finding homes for the boys to board in, even sending them to college. Frankie nodded as if he were an expert. We were going to try out so we could get out of the orphanage, but we don't have to now because we got adopted. Well, that's wonderful. Doesn't mean you still can't enter for the fun of it, said Mr. Wilkinson. But you gotta have the official harmonica and you gotta be ten years old. Except if you're a mascot. See? Frankie pointed to the young boy in the poster. That's right, that youngster is a novelty and only plays with the band when it's in town. He doesn't travel with them. The band's got all sorts of rules about such things, but he's sure a crowd pleaser in that uniform, he winked at Frankie. And you're right about the harmonica. It has to be the Honer Marine Band in the sea of Key of C. I just received a shipment from the warehouse yesterday, and they're going like hotcakes. Only 65 cents each. He pulled a striped handkerchief from his apron pocket and began blotting his forehead. Speaking of hotcakes, this weather is a steamy kitchen. The heat has about got me beat. Frankie looked up at Mr. Howard. Mrs. Pennyweather took away the harmonica's granny bought for us. Mr. Howard smiled. Mr. Wilkinson, I don't think we're interested in the contest, but two harmonicas might just be the ticket. Right this way, said Mr. Wilkinson. He opened the shop door and a bell on the frame jingled. Mr. Howard and Frankie followed Mr. Wilkinson to the counter near the register. There are kittens underfoot, so watch your steps, said Mr. Wilkinson. Three of them somewhere in the store. Mike walked down the narrow center aisle, mindful of where he stepped and savoring the smell of bow rosin, leather cases, and wood polish. His eyes couldn't look fast enough at all the instruments that crowded every available space. Trumpets in a glass case. Cellos, propped at attention. Violins suspended from the ceiling. Crash cymbals and snare drums. A bass drum on a pedestal. It reminded him of the shop where Granny used to take him to buy sheet music. Isn't it wonderful, she'd say. Music is just waiting to escape from all of these instruments. He smiled, remembering how he'd always expected to see a string of black notes fleeing from the bell of a tuba or a trombone. Frankie ran toward him, holding a calico kitten in one hand and a new harmonica in the other. Look, Mike, it comes with an instruction booklet with songs. Listen, he ran his mouth over the harmonica. Doesn't it sound grand? I took the last one by the register, but Mr. Wilkinson said for you to go to the back counter and get one from the carton he just opened. Frankie wandered back to where Mr. Howard and Mr. Wilkinson stood together talking. Mike worked his way to the back of the store until he reached a counter in front of a curtain storeroom. On top sat a big open carton filled with slim cases. Mike lifted one and opened it. Inside, twelve individual boxes lay in a row, each imprinted with a photo of the United States Marine Band. The last box on the bottom caught his eye. The blue border seemed brighter than the rest. The red lettering bolder, the photograph of the marine band sharper. When he lifted the lid, he could have sworn he heard a chord erupt like a high-pitched chime. He glanced around. It must have been Mr. Wilkinson's cash register. Mike opened the box, picked up the harmonica, and turned it over. He noticed a small red painted M on one edge. He lifted the harmonica to his lips, ran the scale, and then played the last six notes of America the Beautiful. During the pause after the final note and before his next breath, all the instruments in the shop struck a long, echoing chord. He spun around, his eyes darting to the motionless instruments. No one else was around. Everything was quiet. It was stuffy in the shop, and he felt lightheaded. He wiped at his brow, now beaded with perspiration, and put the harmonica back in its box. 
He clutched it in his hand as he headed out toward the front. He was escorted by a chorus of sounds, the hoots of clarinets, the swish-swish of the snare drum, the plucking of violin strings, and the deep strum of the cello. When he passed the trumpets, a fanfare blasted. He glanced over his shoulder. Everything looked the same. Had Granny been right? Was the music escaping? Or was this all some clever trick of Mr. Wilkinson's? A kitten followed him, pawing at his ankles. With each step, the space around him felt more crowded and the air thicker. I've already paid, said Mr. Howard when Mike reached him. I see you chose a harmonica. Mike nodded. Mr. Wilkinson winked at him. I always say the instrument chooses the musician instead of the other way around, he nodded to Mr. Howard. Thank you for your business. As they walked out and the door swung shut behind them, the bell on the frame fluttered like a giddy piccolo. Outside, Mike rubbed his forehead. Maybe the heat had him beat, too. Even the harmonica felt warm in his hand. He leaned toward Frankie. You hear anything funny in there? No, but guess what? Mr. Howard said Mr. Potter is the best harmonica player he's ever heard in his entire life. And tomorrow's his day off, and maybe he can teach us some songs. All the way to the trolley stop, Mike and Frankie played their harmonicas. Mike sounded different from Frankie's. He had a tone he couldn't explain. It seemed older and rounder somehow. As he played songs he already knew by heart, his steps became more buoyant, and his heart filled with something he had not felt for a long while. Was it happiness? The trolley stopped, bell clanging. Mr. Howard smiled and said, Come on, boys, time to head home. Frankie grabbed Mike's hand and squeezed it. Mike looked at the kid's smiling face and squeezed in return. Mr. Howard had said home. Maybe this time they could catch a break and everything would go right. <laughs>